An enormous chunk is absent, not only from our own human history, but also from the history of our planet, the true extent of which, according to the considerable collection of uparts gathered over the years, was filled with the flourish of vast technological developments by many civilizations. This although somehow missing from academic teachings. The reasons for this absence are deep and far-reaching. Religious institutions, scientific theory, yet the unfortunate root of all these motivations, seemingly fueling this orchestrated ignorance, is money. Certain theories are attached to substantially profitable endeavors. Therefore, academia is very unlikely to budge, even when confronted with evidence to prove they are wrong. They simply profit from the continuation of a lie. One of our most compelling defenses for our accusation, and the evidence we feel most condemning of academia's ignorance to this obvious truth, is the highly complex, clearly advanced, seemingly impossible ruins found all over Earth, attributed by these said institutions to the most convenient recent ancestor. Not only do many of these structures still evade explanation today, but all of these so-called experts, undoubtedly handsomely paid to paint specific pictures of the past, fall silent in unison when asked to provide explanations to their claims, not only how our modern ancestors built the palaces we share on our channel, but also why they never recorded such tasks, anywhere within any of their substantial writings, or indeed artistic, illustrative documentation of their lives. Indeed, found drenching the structures they claim as their own, yet, apparently, not able of building. One of the most amazing, recently realized examples is undoubtedly Coilap, a site we recently explored, and although the site has been known to the modern man for many centuries, it has taken aircraft photography and a keen observer to actually realize the truly astonishing task that Coilap actually was, originally thought to be a walled fortress, an astonishing ruin from the ground alone. Yet, viewing the site from the sky shows that not only was an enormous natural plateau artificially walled off, but the entire back of the fortress was amazingly backfilled with earth. The city of Tsinsunsan, within modern-day Mexico, once had a population of between 25,000 and 30,000. However, when the Spanish arrived in the 1520s, the conquest virtually decimated the population of the city. This clear evidence of how easily civilizations come and go, yet academia remains deliberately oblivious of this fact. The extraordinarily circular structures found within the city, claimed to be pyramids, have merely been ignored and assumed to have been the work of these once decimated modern inhabitants, completely ignoring not only the astonishingly precise stonework, but also the fact that just like Quelap, the site contains astonishing earthworking, created with unbelievable precision, and like Quelap, containing circular structures. Was this site once built by the same people? An incredible site, one which demands astute and honest research. Our mission over the next few videos is to demonstrate why certain individuals that are currently attempting to claim ancient ruins we so often share on our channel were the work of academia's claimed constructors are not only vastly incorrect, but that they are also being selectively ignorant. We intend to demonstrate the reasons why this explanation as to their origins is a virtual impossibility, and also prove the level of advanced knowledge needed to construct them evades even our modern civilization. Roman and Greek civilizations undoubtedly contributed tremendous amounts to modern life, be it their technologies or building techniques. Architectural designs and ideas incorporated into structures that have survived millennia. However, there are many anomalous aspects of their academically claimed ruins that not only demonstrate unbelievable skill and precision, but are so advanced as to evade our own current understanding. One of these defining characteristics is undoubtedly polygonal masonry. 
randomly shaped or possibly cast stones, with some for example found within Sacsayhuaman, reaching far into hundreds of tons, masterfully fitted together, constructed into walls and fortresses, with no utilization of mortars. These often enormous megalithic blocks somehow placed together so perfectly that not only have they survived countless millennia, but are also earthquake-proof. These stone walls are a demonstration of what can be achieved if one had an astonishing intellect, and indeed, stone-building capabilities. These walls simply evade modern human explanation. No modern, or indeed any of the well-studied ancient civilizations, have ever demonstrated anything even near to the levels of refinement exhibited within these ancient walls, found all over the globe, yet ignored by academics the world over. How can certain individuals claim that academia's tale of events be accurate, yet seemingly overlook such astonishing feats of ancient engineering? How can one be expected to believe that the cultures currently claimed as having been responsible for such constructions, did indeed complete such tasks, when they are, in reality, too advanced an undertaking even for our own modern civilization. As such, continuing to evade explanation. We feel that many of these individuals are merely towing a line, rather than attempting to unravel that which they perceive as enigmatic and considerably controversial to their current supposed viewpoint. We feel there is no excuse for a diligent researcher to overlook these achievements when investigating such sites, or indeed, attempting to unravel the secrets of our past. We also feel that if one attempts to explain away such sites, or merely overlook such features in favor of academic explanation, it is an indication of conspiratorial motives, rather than that of an honest purveyor of discoveries. There are many unexplained features of the ancient world many of which we intend to share over the coming videos. And if one merely wishes to convey an illusion of all-knowing, they are soon to become unstuck, just like the academia they so mindlessly follow and we so vehemently disagree with. Due to these deliberate twisting of the facts, they are undoubtedly highly compelling. Many people are aware of the archaeological site known as Gobekli Tepe an astonishing sight of clearly great antiquity. A sight like many others which dot our earth, which displays a far more sophisticated understanding, construction, and living practices to that of which would be publicly accepted by much of modern academia. Instead, it is often more favored to merely ignore such data as abnormalities, or it seems, if possible, to lock such controversies away from inquisitive minds, deep within archives or underwater. And our next site is no exception. Although Gobekli Tepe has become a synonymous candidate for evidence of a once highly advanced ancient civilization which once flourished here on our planet, it is not the only site to be found within the area or even the most astonishing. Known as Norsen Tepe, this is the real gem of archaeological Turkey. And yet, just like Waffle Rock, a site we have previously covered on our channel, located within the US, it lay at the bottom of a man-made dam, submerged deliberately and conveniently very shortly after some highly controversial discoveries were beginning to be made at the site. An enormous mounded fort, designed and shaped with a purpose of providing a sophisticated living quarters, when the site was excavated, it was found that no less than 40 inhabitations were present within the strata. Excavations were conducted between 1968 and 1974 by the German Archaeological Institute. Archaeologists, led by Harold Hopman, the Heidelberg professor of prehistory and early history, found considerable evidence to suggest that many of the later inhabitants of this sophisticated fort were themselves highly advanced, seemingly preserving many mysterious items left by many as yet unknown people. Why a government would make the move to flood such a location remains a subject of debate and one which has led some to accuse the Mexican government of being complicit in the cover-up of a highly advanced, ancient civilization which once lived here on Earth. The fieldwork was finished by 1974. Shortly thereafter, the construction of the Kiban Dam works began, 
rising the water level and submerging the site away from prying eyes. Who built Norsen Tepe? Why did they build it? It seems this fort has remained impenetrable since the day it was built, even successfully keeping out the elements for untold millennia, preserving untold treasures from a bygone era, treasures which seemingly shone too bright a light for some to bear. What kind of controversial archaeology is Norsen Tepe protecting? What are these government's bodies attempting to hide? These are questions which must be answered. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. We cover many structures on our channel, which often contain features and characteristics that the academically claimed constructors were simply incapable of achieving. Enormous megalithic blocks, some weighing far into thousands of tons, yet there also exists many other ancient structures with equally baffling features, such as extremely refined stone-cut architecture, seemingly only capable of achieving with advanced technology or enigmatic buildings with as yet unexplained ages and origins. One such structure is known as the Maiden's Tower, the oldest structure within the city of Baku in Iran. Many legends surround the origins of this structure, with vastly varying claims to its age. Some believe it is a mere 800 years old, while others attest to it being far more than 2,000. Many supposed specialists have examined the structure, Yet, interestingly, they all seem to come to different conclusions regarding its original purpose. Some say that it was a lighthouse, some say it was a fortress or a burial chamber. Yet the most interesting explanations of its origins are found within the legends found within the local community. It is said that an ancient king once fell in love with his own daughter and built the tower due to his strange, incestuous devotion for her. He promised his daughter that if she were to marry him, he would give or build her anything if she were to agree. So she requested he build the tower. She supposedly visited the build regularly and consistently gave advice and her opinion on how she wanted the construction completed. Once it was built, it was the most reinforced, strongest building in all the land, yet instead of keeping her promise, she climbed to the top of the building and threw herself into the sea, presumably to escape the proposition given to her by her father. Yet, regardless of legends, the mystery as to the true origins of the tower, or indeed its age, remains a complete mystery. I feel that upon close examination of the structure, it has been masterfully reinforced and renovated at numerous times within its long life. With the original stonework being of a tiny scale, yet much of the structure has been reinforced and built upon, most likely for several different strategical reasons throughout the millennia. It is indeed possible that the original structure is many thousands of years old, yet due to the reconstruction seen upon it by numerous groups using numerous techniques, it has predictably resulted in the many specialists who have examined it, coming to different conclusions as to its original purpose. Interestingly, academic geologists have argued that it was constructed during the 9th and 15th century. This was due to the receding of the Caspian Sea, making it possible for the town to grow around it. Yet could the legends of the king's daughter plunging into the sea be true? with the tower originally having been built upon the shores of the sea? It seems we may never know. However, there are many other towers which dot the earth with origins that are equally enigmatic. Some in particular are found deep within the Himalayas. Known as star towers, and for obvious reasons, not only is their construction a baffling ancient feat due to their geographical locations, but the original purpose of these towers is a complete mystery, escaping explanation, baffling of all who have ventured to them to study their build and characteristics in depth. Mostly located in Kham, Qingtang, and Kangpo, which are provinces of pre-modern Tibet. They were first described during the Ming Dynasty, around 1368. With carbon dating by Frederick d'Aragon apparently showing they were built approximately 500 to 1800 years ago, yet these datings are so vast and vague, I postulate that they too 
may have experienced several conservation efforts and have been reconstructed or reinforced on several occasions throughout the eons. Actually being relics of a lost civilization whose original purpose has become lost, just like the civilizations who use them. Who built these mysterious structures? Why did they build them? Are they, as I suspect, far older than academia would ever admit to them being? In reality, being consistently regenerated relics of a lost civilization that throughout their lives have fortunately been reinforced and renovated throughout antiquity? We find such structures, their unknown age, and indeed their mysterious origins, highly compelling. The megalithic site of Gornaya Shoria is undoubtedly one of, if not the most incredible ancient site on Earth. Found upon the Shoria Mountains in southern Siberia, it is a place that has long been argued by influential academics and funded geologists as merely being a natural formation, which, simply by chance, appears to have once been an artificially constructed site. The reason for this denial of any artificial origins is unquestionably due to the size of some of the stones which make up the site, with the heaviest that academics have noted reaching far into several thousand tons in weight. This would make it the largest megalithic site discovered in the world if one could find any compelling evidence of the site once having an artificially constructed origin. Additionally, if proved to have an artificial origin, the erosion present on such enormous blocks would be indicative of a civilization which existed many, many millennia ago. Russian media, along with many other funded outlets and institutions, by default, have to deny that these stones could ever have been created via artificial means. This is due to the long-attested timeline for man, and the subsequent protection of the true past of our species a timeline which spans much further into the past than currently claimed, one which I am systematically uncovering upon my channel. Popular news outlets have regularly presented articles written by Russian scientists who, predictably, concluded that this rock formation be the result of geological processes associated with the intense weathering of the rock, comprising Mount Inshoria. Both tectonic forces acting on deeply buried bedrock and pressure release that occurs within near-surface bedrock uplifted the eroded stones, which they claim that this supposedly commonly forms rectangular block-like rock formations that consist of jointed rocks. However, as the site has become more and more well-known, within circles not bound by the chains of mainstream academic funding, and thus free to investigate the idea of the area indeed once having been artificially created. Evidence of this incredible reality. Compelling characteristics of this ancient site has recently been discovered which I feel is overwhelming evidence of the site indeed once having been an ancient settlement. This reality, although simply impossible for any loyal academic to admit to, is one that these recently discovered stones proves beyond doubt not only were these stones clearly cut using lost ancient stone cutting technology, but has left a signature mark upon the stone, uncannily similar to that in which I have named the Cyclopean civilization. These same signature tool marks can be found upon the unfinished obelisk of Aswan, Egypt, and also the most important link I feel I have ever researched. Basda Caves, which has not only been academically admitted as the ancient quarry for the stones of Haran, but due to the most peculiar design of these blocks, has enabled me to link the site to not only Gornaya Shoria, but countless other seemingly impossible as yet unexplained ancient ruins all over the globe. These blocks found at the site are not only of an enormous scale, but are undoubtedly artificially cut using some form of stone cutting technology created by a lost civilization. These stones, I feel, not only prove the site's artificial origins, but due to the pattern left by the tools which work them into the shape that they are today, was built by the same civilization responsible for Baalbek, which also contains stones which are well over a thousand tons in weight. 
the unfinished obelisk, which is also well over a thousand tons. Yet this site is unquestionably now the largest currently recognized to still be in existence here upon our planet, with only the megaliths of Yangshan Quarry that unfortunately were left unliberated topping them in weight, with the largest at the quarry reaching far over the 16,000 tons mark. Yet the site has still not been fully explored, so there is a high chance that some of the stone in Gornaya Shoria may even top that of the blocks of Yangshan Quarry. These stones are unquestionably an incredible valuable find, and regardless of academia's deliberate ignorance in regards to such discoveries, has finally vindicated all those claimed as fringe researchers as having been right on the money with their astonishing claims of it once having been man-made a claim now proven to be a reality. Not only is Gornaya Shoria one of the most incredible sites on Earth, but it is unquestionably highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.